Craig Diamond taking play inside the 30 metre line. Danny Lee turning it back inside for the uh, fullback, Mitch Healy. They're 15 out from the line now, the Sharks. This is Aaron Raper. Now Paul, uh, young Paul Bell. Plenty of these faces, I can assure you, are new to uh, all of us in rugby league. Here's a chance for Aaron Raper. Get some downward pressure on it. It's a try. This man is Graham. Straining his way towards the line. Raper, nice ball. That's Kern. Back now for Bowden. Bowden puts it over the line. While Balmain's nightmare start to 93, left them without a point after six outings. Out by the wedding house and again. Wider it comes. Numbers here for the Sharks. They must score. Higgins for the corner and Higgins scores. Sharks bit back with two quick tries in the second half. The first, a great solo effort full of determination from Michael Porter. While the Roosters were growing, the Sharks, fresh from their midweek win over Canberra, started brightly in their Penrith Park clash with the Panthers, with Glenn Coleman's length of the field try giving Cronulla an early 6-0 lead. In try in the second half, it was scored by Cronulla's Greg Davies, but it was enough for two valuable competition points in a 10-8 victory over the Mountain Men. At Ronson Field, drop ball by both sides marred the fast-moving match. South paid the penalty first, though. Moon couldn't pass, Webb couldn't clean up, and Cronulla's Andrew Weddinghausen couldn't make up his mind for a moment, but then went himself. Midway through the second half, a skillful around-the-corner pass from reserve Mark Ellenson to skipper Greg Nixon put the Sharks further ahead. And then just a couple of minutes from the siren, it was Eddinghausen again. As it happened, it didn't matter that he cleverly accepted that forward pass from Errol Hillier to scoot into the corner and wrap it up 14-0. I never stopped trying. And they saved a whitewash when replacement centre Jim C was sent on his way by Andrew Eddinghausen. C just managed to beat a tied Steve Ella tackle before scoring the try. Parramatta wrapped up the score. At the Ronson Field, Jack Gibson Sharks got away to a bright start, crossing for the first try after just 11 minutes when Chris Whittle touched down to grab a 6-0 lead. He's dropped the ball in the last two times he's handled. That's no good for a young player's confidence in his first big league match. Wakefield, there goes Docking. Docking will score the first rugby league try of the new season. Johnny Docking scores. There's not very much of these little men, but Wakefield and Docking, their wares about. The ball was spun away to Jimmy Lees and he gave it to Mark Wakefield. And then Docking came screaming in from pullback. He wrong, uh, wrong put at Gary Jack and he was into... Nixon playing the ball near the halfway through Wakefield. On through Lease, and it's out to McGaw. The centres came up too quickly. McGaw's got those big legs pumping away. A little chip over the top. A race for the ball. I think there might have been a late tackle. It's still a chance for Cronulla. It's a try for the Sharks. Wakefield scores the try. Good work by Mark McGaw. See it again on the Foster's Lager replay. As big Mark McGaw strode out. He gets the kick in. No, there was no late tackle. And here's Wayne Pierce being pulled back out of it, it would appear. Wakefield rushes for the ball with... The local Southside derby at Ronson Field had a sensational start. After just three tackles in the match, the Sharks scored. Chris Whittle's kick downfield was touched in flight by a St George player, which put Michael Porter, who was in front of Whittle, onside. Porter went ahead before drawing fullback Glenn Burgess, and finding halfback Paul Kennedy, who then combined with winger Phil Dotty before Kennedy backed up to score a shock try. And the Sharks piled on four consecutive tries to take an eight-point lead into the break. Brett Kamali in everything. Kamali, Kamali bounces away from Kennedy and scores! You were too strong. The final score, 36-24. The Warriors' first loss in Australia this season. But we just let them get out of the blocks a little bit too fast. Um, Fairly ordinary first. Cronulla's classy centre, Andrew Eddinghausen, went a step closer to the Kangaroo Tour with a five-star, two-try performance at Ronson Field. The Sharks led West 10-6 at half-time and ran in five tries to two. Oh, there's a tackle! It is a bell ringer from Brian Norrie. Terence, you see who 
was out there now, and here he is. Absolutely leveling David Stan. Great shot by the backup hooker for the show. Across the line again. And oh, big hit. Coming in and jamming in, Jason Bakuya. He said he was a back rower. He hits like a back rower as well. A lot of spin on it. Phelps, though, does well. Oh, and then gets cleaned up. On this near side of the field. What about that from De Goyes? <laughs> Steve Southern bringing his back. And I beat a game. They go to Walker. This is Farrah. Prepared to attack the short side and paint this in hard by Stevens. Steve Southern bringing his back. And I beat a game. That followed nearly 48 hours of soaking rain, Cronulla's professionalism came under the microscope and they didn't let their hardy home fans down. The Sharks' opening try was a messy affair, but the follow-up was something you'd only expect on a dry track. Here comes the cover, centre kick for Carney. Will he win the race? He does, and scores a spectacular try. Ricky Stewart's side snatched their third try in the space of eight minutes when Man Mountain Cade Snowden smashed his way through. Owned in on the honour of becoming the NRL's top point scorer for 2008, an unselfish Cavell again found time to assist others. Luke Cavell! I can't believe what I've just seen, God, he's a freak. Cavell's left boot is better known for producing two pointers, but on this memorable night for the unfashionable flanker, he just kept crafting four pointers. Can you believe it? See you, see you. The goal.